get it over the lip one more time. Get it over the lip. Oh, fuck. You committed to it. I guess you'd say I'm a skateboard video maker. I also run a distribution company called Theories of Atlantis. I do a series of videos called Static, and so I, we made a website for each video. And after like the third video, it hit me that we should maybe just have one website, you know? And instead of calling it after the video, we named it Theories of Atlantis, which I could give you an hour-long explanation of why it has that name, but I'm super fascinated about like conspiracy theories in the early to mid 2000s. Skateboarding had blown up, it was on, you know, like there's MTV shows, you know. It was weird that skateboarding got to this like corporate point. It was inevitable that skaters were gonna become disenfranchised with that. The goal was to give a home to the underground and like independent stuff. In skateboarding, a filmer is basically a cameraman, but the role of a filmer goes so much farther than that. He's like the guy who basically organizes everything, he motivates everybody. Without that filmer, a lot of skaters would never have been discovered, you know, because that guy's kind of the conduit for the industry to see, you know, what's going on. It brings exposure, you know, to a local scene. My brother was a skater before I was, so I was always surrounded by it as a kid, and I would watch his videos before I skated. I was not really interested in the skating at the beginning. There was something about the videos themselves and the way the music and the art direction would pull some kind of emotion out of you. Like the first stereo video called a, a visual sound. It's just all jazz music and it was shot on Super 8 and just the way it was captured, it brought you into like a whole nother world. And then the uh, Alien Workshop, their first video called uh, Memory Screen, just so beautifully put together, he edited it on two VHS decks from one to the other, which is baffling. Those two things had such a big influence on me as like wanting to like give somebody else that same experience. What's so exciting about street skating in a lot of ways is you know finding these things that aren't intended for skateboarding, but so miraculously all line up perfectly. I'll see something like that. Nobody else will understand why I'm looking at it, but it's just like, oh, this is amazing. This thing's set up so perfectly. What I like about it, and I think a lot most skaters like about it, is that this stuff isn't intended for this. We're heading downtown right now. Got about a week and a half till the video premiere, so we're kind of at crunch time. What's up? How's it going? Luke Mullaney is one of the newer riders um, on the traffic team. All right. The trick he's been trying, I think it's almost impossible. It's just the thing he's landing into is so steep. I've never seen anybody do anything into that bank that way. Some skaters have a different way of seeing things all together, you know, like different ways you can approach it, and Luke has kind of a, a unique eye for stuff. Oh, man. You just never know because it's probably 60% skill and 40% chance. That was so it. Does his board hit the crack in the ground at the right angle to where it positions his feet just right so that he's able to ride out? In New York City, which makes this city literally the hardest city I've ever filmed in, is the pedestrian factor. You know, it's just so many tourists, so many people, and you can't get mad at them because it's, a, you know, one of the ones who aren't supposed to be there. He tried it for, for ages and just, it just didn't work out. Ah, oh, God. He didn't choose an easy one. There's a lot of time invested and pain and you know, agony and, and stress to amass you know, this 45 minute project. It's just the way it goes. I mean, it was like four hours probably that we spent there trying it. If you add up all those tries, it's got to be in the hundreds. A skate video in its entirety is typically 35 to 45 minutes. The average single trick is around uh, two and a half to three seconds long once it's edited down in a video. You see how much goes into just getting one clip. You know, they, they shoot a whole movie in a matter of months, you know, whereas it takes two years to make a, a, a normal skate video. He's landed like 20 of them. It just hits the ground like a sack of potatoes. It's like so hard to control it, you it's know? So quick. Yeah. Ricky's like, I would call him the godfather of East Coast skateboarding. He just had a, a very different approach. 
The thing that I think everybody remembers Ricky for, there was a video called Eastern Exposure. Still to me, hands down, it's the best like street skating video part of all time. When that video came out, so many skaters either identified with it or changed the way they skated because it was a whole new thing. Going to Hudson and uh, Canal. Are you guys all skate up there or what? Yeah. Before today, I know he hadn't filmed in at least three to four years. Now, you know, he's like, has a full-time job, three kids. It's a very delicate thing, you know, trying to film with him here, finding something that can like really showcase his style and his skating, but that he's still capable and he'll have the confidence to do. Man, thing is sticking too hard. It's well known Ricky has like, he has a lot of attitude and he's got very strong opinions. Ricky's not afraid to, to say something that's gonna be unpopular or to, to piss people off. I warm up by Alan. I'll do it right now because you're telling me to do it. Fucking douche. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a YouTube channel. Fucking kidding me. To the people like me who so appreciate you know his personality and his style and, and skateboarding we just want to see him on a board skating you know i don't care how difficult the trick he does is we, and with this short amount of time you know it's like we're a, what a week and a half out from the video premiere and we still don't have any clips of him yeah ricky it's to do like that. nah it'll look fine Yo, you're not gonna get in trouble for fucking crossing the street. Jesus fucking. There's a lot of like days where I'm like, finally it's a Saturday morning. I'm like, dude, I just want to chill. But I still feel like there's a mission, you know, that ha is un unaccomplished. Oh my God, dude. Fucking awesome clip. Aye. I'm worse than my fucking starting when I was fucking 14. It's more common than not that we spend an entire day out filming and we don't we don't get anything. The premiere for the videos coming up really soon, and uh, we're gonna do it at the White Hotel. They have like a rad little theater underground. Still have to make sure the edit's good, make sure the skaters are happy with their music, and get it mastered to a DVD. Uh, I'm sure it's gonna be filled with uh, a few pitfalls, but we'll see how it goes. The premiere for the videos tonight, this is basically the world premiere. Everybody say, yeah, where's Rick? All at once. <laughs> Thanks everybody for coming out. We're stoked you guys are here. Hope you guys enjoy it. This is, uh, everybody who's here knows what goes into making a skate video. It's crazy that we have this many people who are down to support, you know, and all of our friends here. So thanks everybody for coming out. I'm trying to be like seven mil. I guess we're just gonna play the video. Thanks for coming out. That's kind of like the most rewarding part of the, of the premiere is seeing how everybody reacts. And, and I always, before a premiere, I, I remind this, you know, the people in the audience, like this is rare to have all of us together experiencing this a video for the first time because nowadays everybody's at home watching everything on their laptops. So to see all this stuff culminated into one video, make noise, make everybody know, you know that you appreciate what you're seeing because it is a struggle we all go through for this purpose, you know, for this one night. like more people than the theater can hold. I'm really stoked on how like the guys came through with footage, you know, the fact that we got, got some awesome clips of Ricky right at the last minute, you know, really helped make it feel complete. Stoked. Happy with how it went. Yeah. yeah. The last three videos, I swore, is the last video I'm ever gonna do. Once you finish it, you're like, I, there's no way I could ever do that again. But you start burning for that feeling of being able to create that experience again. You have an idea of like, man, that song would go so good to that. You know what I mean? You just start picturing things in your head and it's like, well, what, where else am I gonna do that? You know what I mean? People aren't gonna be making big full length videos like they were, but people are coming back to it a little bit because it's hard to really create a moving experience in a short, you know, 30 second Instagram clip.
the best videos of the past 10 years, the majority of them were, were small independent things from kids you'd never heard of. They were making far more interesting stuff than all the big brands. Any businessman who came to see what we're doing at Theories of Atlantis would be like, wait, hold on a second, what? There's only something like 16 million skaters in the world and we're catering to maybe 5% of that. The, the videos we make, the things we film, the skaters we work with by choice, the brands we carry, it's all done out of respect for this, this history and the ideals that we all believe in. And people like Ricky started or, or influenced us from in the beginning, you know, uh, the guys who paved the way and the guys who, who gave skateboarding its identity and, and created the culture. Ricky, in my opinion, contributed a ton. He, to, in my opinion, has gotten the, the least amount for it. It's rewarding to help promote the people and, and styles that have been so meaningful to me growing up. The things that gave me like something to believe in and something that inspired me and, and to help ho hopefully create new things like that.